Hello guys, welcome you all to Biotech Made Easy videos. This video is about SHRNA. SHRNA uh, is short hairpin RNAs. Uh, these are the, the RNAs which, are, which can silence the target gene through RNA interference. Now what is RNA interference? RNA interference is the phenomenon in which the double-stranded RNA molecules can uh, block the protein synthesis and that's how the expression of gene is blocked and the gene silencing takes place. This phenomenon have many pathways like uh, miRNA, siRNA, piRNA. I have made separate videos for all these phenomenon and uh, if you want to know detail about these you can go through those uh, videos and find out the details. SHRNA is the molecule with high hairpin turn. To make this hairpin loop, two complementary sequences are linked or paired by a short loop of 4 to 11 nucleotides. This structure resembles to the naturally occurring microRNA. The size of mature SHRNA is 19 to 22 base pairs. SHRNAs are artificial RNA molecules and are not found naturally in any cell. These are synthesized through vectors. Bacterial, viral or plasmid vectors can be used for this purpose. Here you see the structure and formation of SHRNA. Uh, look at the single RNA, single stranded RNA transcript. It has complementary sequence which folds back on itself and forms a stem and loop regions of SHRNA. A stem region has complementary antisense and sense strands in which pairing takes place, whereas the loop has unpaired nucleotide. So that is quite clear from the figure. Okay, now let's talk about vectors. Since SHRNAs are not endogenous, so expression of SHRNA in cells is typically done either through the delivery of plasmids or bacterial and viral vectors. Plasmids are modified by inserting the SHRNA so that its expression can be obtained. This approach can be used successfully for in vitro experiments but it is not applicable in vivo. Amongst bacterial vectors, recombinant E. coli, Escherichia coli, with a plasmid having SHRNA have been used. A variety of viral vectors are used for SHRNA expression in cell. For example, adenovirus, adeno-associated virus, lentivirus, etc. These can integrate into the host genome and create stable cell lines. Viral vectors can be used for in vivo applications also. While designing the vector, choice of promoter and method of delivery should be taken into consideration. Since we need expression vector, hence promoter are very important here. In this figure, you can see extra chromosomal expression plasmid, PLKO1 puro. This is the plasmid. It has two origin of replication sequences and these sequences are from F1 and PUC series of plasmid vectors. Marker genes such as ampicillin resistant for bacterial selection and puromycin or puro resistant gene for mammalian selection are also visible here. Besides, it has long terminal repeats which are shown as 5' prime LTR and 3' prime LTR. HPGK promoter, H is for human. Human PGK promoter and Psi DNA uh, packaging signal can also be seen in the figure. Another vector shown here is PSHRNA GFP lentivirus, which also has two ORE sequences from PUC and SV40. Then 3 prime, 5 prime LTRs are there, and the markers ampicillin resistant gene and puromycin resistant genes are there. Besides, 
It also shows SV40 promoter and many other sequences. And uh, yeah, both the vectors have multiple cloning sites written in figure as MCS, multiple cloning sites. This is the, se this is the segment having many restriction sites for insertion of foreign gene. And here the shRNA is inserted using one of the restriction sites, um, whichever is suitable that can that restriction site can be taken. Okay, so let's talk about the mechanism. Since the shRNA is not endogenous, it is you know synthesized from and synthesized and introduced from outside, and we take the help of plasmid DNA uh, with the help of plasmid. The shRNA transcript is introduced into the nucleus and here you can see the single-stranded RNA molecule uh, which, is have, which is around 50 to 80 nucleotide long and the RNA polymerase initiates the whole process in the nucleus and here you can see the shRNA is formed. This shRNA is formed because uh, uh, there are complementary regions and those complementary regions, they, they pair with each other or you can say the self-hybridization takes place or, or you can say the single-stranded RNA folds back on itself and the pairing takes place and the SH uh, and this loop is also formed which is not having any pairing. And then the next step is that with the help of exportin, this is a protein which is needed for transportation of this shRNA into the cytoplasm. This shRNA reaches into the uh, into the cytoplasm and now onwards the whole process will take place in the cytoplasm. So uh, once it is in the cytoplasm, the dicer molecule are present there and they attack on it. So this shRNA it encounters with the dicer enzyme. Dicer is the enzyme which is, you know, it belongs to RNA's three family. So it can act upon the double-stranded RNA. So here, because it is double-stranded RNA, Dicer can act upon it. Then uh, next you can see uh, it uh, slices uh, the shRNA and this kind of molecule is formed which is having the two nucleotide overhang at the three prime end. So you can see these two molecule overhang at both the three prime ends. So this is double stranded RNA which resembles siRNA. Then next step is that uh, risk molecule is there. Risk is RNA induced silencing complex which have got argonaut. It's it's very important protein here. So that uh, now is loaded upon this double stranded RNA or siRNA. So here you can see this is a duplex, the same duplex which is loaded with the risk. Uh, from here onwards actually this is similar to siRNA. If you have gone through the video of siRNA then you will understand it very easily. Uh, next is unwinding takes place here because until now it is you know duplex in which the pairing is there but the unwinding take place will take place and out of these two strands the one strand you call as the passenger strand and the other strand you call as the guide strand uh, out of those two strands only the one strand which is actually the guide strand that will remain attached to it so here you can see the guide strand is attached to it and the passenger strand after the unwinding, it will go into the cytoplasm and it will be degraded. So here, now it is single-stranded RNA. And then this single-stranded RNA, uh, you know, guides the risk to, to, to scan for the messenger RNA. To scan for that messenger RNA which is complementary to, to this. And as soon as it finds that messenger RNA here, you can see this is the messenger RNA which has some portion complementary to this uh, shRNA portion, single-stranded RNA. So there, then the pairing will take place 
and the result is that the protein will be blocked, protein formation will be blocked and the messenger RNA is degraded. So once the messenger RNA is degraded, it cannot express itself and the result is that the uh, gene silencing takes place. So this is the mechanism of SHRNA. Okay, so that's how the SHRNA works. Uh, these SHRNAs are, you know, uh, they are constructed or they are synthesized in such a way that they can target the messenger RNA and, and they, can, they can silence the gene. So that's uh, because of this reason they have uh, many applications. They have applications in making transgenic plants but uh, uh, most of its applications are in therapeutics and it has been used for uh, many uh, cancer treatments, for example, the cancer of lungs, uh, skin, prostate cancer, uh, breast cancer, so different type of cancers and also in different other diseases it has been used. So that's it. I hope I could make you understand this whole process. Uh, see you again in the next video. Uh, till then, bye and wish you good luck.